Many decades after his inception, Sonic the Hedgehog is still one of the most recognizable characters in gaming history. Chances are, if you were around in the 1990s, then you played some of the original games he was featured in on the Sega Genesis, or at the very least, you were aware of them. The original three games made a huge impact on the world, not only establishing Sonic as a household name himself, but also popularizing an entire genre of cartoony, semi-edgy platformer mascot characters that even continues to this day with games like Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper, and Ukulele, the Sonic games served many purposes when they were created. Yes, Sega desperately needed a flagship character to help contrast themselves with Nintendo, but in a more broad scope, the world really needed an alternative to the slow, happy-go-lucky Mario. And they got that with Sonic. Not only did Sonic's emergence help shepherd Sega into the top of the heap for a moment in the 90s financially, but his fast-paced, in-your-face style really served as an excellent challenge to the the family-friendly Mario, tons of characters similar to Sonic have come and gone over the last 20 years, and almost none of them have even approached the popularity that he rose to during the 16-bit era. Who would have thought that a character that was largely just a composite of Felix the Cat and Mickey Mouse would capture the imagination of Western and Eastern audiences? Well, the team that came up with him did, apparently, as they reportedly took a very scientific approach to craft the perfect alternative to Nintendo's sanitized, safe-looking life library in collaboration with the new team at Sega of America. By the time the third game was out, Sonic was a household name and the Sega Genesis was neck and neck with Nintendo and had taken over the top spot as the top selling console in some instances, as Sonic 2 was the pack-in game replacing Altered Beast. Even after the original trilogy, the franchise was generally pretty reliable with games like Sonic and Knuckles and some spin-offs like Spinball, 3D Blast, and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine that sold relatively well and were pretty good overall. Unfortunately, as most gamers old and young now know, Sonic the Hedgehog as a franchise has seen one of the greatest falls from grace in gaming history in terms of quality of the games that have come out. Sonic Adventure games took the series into the 3D era and were impressive for the time, but they couldn't quite stand up to Mario 64 in a lot of ways, which has aged much better than Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 despite being much older and technically inferior on paper. Unfortunately, that trend has largely continued to this day, with games like Sonic Heroes, Sonic Unleashed, and the 2006 Sonic Reboot all selling fairly well but performing terribly in the eyes of critics who generally cite technical glitches, boring nonsensical stories, and bad controls, among other things, keeping the games from being very good at all. So why did this happen? Why did a franchise that featured a character who was the undisputed darling of the 16-bit era fall so far? What the hell happened to Sonic the Hedgehog? Usually when you ask fans of the original 16-bit Sonic games to pinpoint where the downfall of Sonic began, they tend to point to the PS2 era with games like Sonic Heroes and Sonic Riders and Shadow the Hedgehog as the era that's largely responsible for the beginning of the end of the glory days. Other old fans like myself go a little further back and point to Sonic R and Sonic Adventure as the start of the loss of quality, but regardless of whether the degradation began in the 32-bit era or not, the fact remains that there was a major degradation degradation that took place. On that point, we all agree, and those of us who grew up playing the originals and at one time wanted nothing more than to get home from school, kick off our light-up sneakers, and toss our Goosebumps Trapper Keepers to the side so we could flip on our Sega Genesis and play some Sonic, now find ourselves in our 30s and having trouble trusting Sega to bring Sonic games that are even worth playing at all, let alone spending money on. The fact is, in the late 1990s, the team that worked on the original games began to be more and more fragmented, with some members of Sonic Team heading to other developers and publishers that were working with Nintendo or Sony, which were sporting much more successful platforms than the Saturn and the Dreamcast, and what few original members were left were largely allocated to different franchises like Choo Choo Rocket, Burning Rangers, and Nights into Dreams, all of which were perfectly fine games, but perhaps brought some creative influences into the team that ended up contributing to Sonic games losing their identity over time. Once the new millennium was off and running, Sonic games Games continued to experiment with different angles that basically nobody was asking for with games like Sonic and the Black Knight, Sonic and the Secret Rings, Sonic Callers, Sonic Freeriders, Sonic Generations, and others. Some of these titles did reach a decent level of quality that many fans would call good, particularly Generations and Colors, but overall, the levels of greatness that had once been expected of the franchise were still no longer to be seen. The loss of Sonic's identity with experimental subgenres was certainly a huge part of the 
downfall, but as those failed experiments continued for nearly 15 more years, the question in a lot of gamers' minds changed from why did this happen to why does this continue to happen? Most long-running franchises are no stranger to new directions that don't work out. The thing that separates these small missteps from franchise-killing mistakes is that a smart team will bring the franchise back to its roots as quickly as possible to shore up goodwill with the fan base and keep players engaged. The trouble for the Sonic team was that Sega was still making money off of even the worst Sonic games. One of the worst rated Sonic games, Sonic Unleashed, still sold very well since a lot of young parents who remembered the originals from their own childhood needed games for their own kids to play, so the games would get bought. Sonic as a brand was still popular among casual adult gamers who had vague memories of the glory days of the blue blur and were still willing to shell out some cash enough of the time that Sega probably saw no reason to take any more risks fundamentally with changing their direction. This seems to be largely what has happened to Sonic. While the quality of the franchise did drop overall, the games still sold well. And as anybody who understands capitalism at all knows, if you can get away with putting out a product that was easy and cheap to make and still make a profit, there's almost no reason to not do so. The flip side of that is there could potentially be even more money to be made in a quality product, which is probably why we did see some relatively bright glimmers of hope start to surface after many long years of mediocrity from the Sonic franchise with games like Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing and its sequel, which weren't really Sonic games as much as they were excellent Sega-themed kart racers, but filled a void for many Sonic fans like myself nevertheless. It did seem like the real future of quality Sonic experiences would be in the form of appearances in other franchises, like Smash Brothers and racing games, rather than actual Sonic games. Until we got the brightest beacon of hope we've had in 20 years with Sonic Mania, which was largely made by the creators of Freedom Planet, a Sonic-inspired indie game, but regardless had recaptured the vibe of the real Sonic games better than nearly anything that came from Sega since the 90s. Sega did dip back into mediocrity with Sonic Forces right after Mania's release, but since that game was in development before Mania came out and showed Sega how well old-school Sonic games could perform, not just in review scores but also monetarily, I would wager that a major lesson was still learned in 2017 for Sega, and hopefully we'll see a return to form for the franchise, whether it be more old-school games like Sonic Mania or modern games that just play well and are fun for all Sonic fans. But as is the case with all situations like this, only time will tell. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.